Obviously, you got a unanimous decision win. You must have felt. Um, what were the feelings, sorry, with Isabella there, cage side, home crowd, main event? Yeah, um, a bit surreal. I was, I was disappointed I didn't get a finish, and Judith was trickier on the ground than I, than I thought she was going to be. She was transitioning and getting underhooks and butterfly hooks as I was landing the takedown, so I knew I had to be patient. I might have looked like I was standing back, but I knew what I was doing. I knew if I had a, a got up to do strikes, got up the lamp, big elbow, she was going to speak me, so I had to be patient on the ground and fight a smart fight rather than looking for a fancy finish. How did you feel walking out there? You know, with the nerves, was, was it different compared to other fights? Not really, do you know, like, I just I just felt calm and I was just focused on her. And it was late and I was tired and just thought, focus, keep your head in the game, be first when you go out and just uh, try and try to treat myself. What did Isabella say to you after I saw you embrace her outside the cage? That was very special moment. She's like, I love you so much. She actually, she has a phone and like two nights ago, she, she never texts me. She only sends me emojis and she texts me, Mum, you, you make me and my family so proud in this big deep message. And I was cutting weight in the bath, like about to die and like everybody was crying. So to see her here tonight and see me when it was so nice. <laughs> yeah, how close was that Amber? It wasn't really. I knew it wasn't going, it wasn't going to go on and I knew I wasn't going to tap. A lot more fluid in when you were standing up in there. I mean, you looked a lot more composed in terms of striking. It, can we credit Owen Roddy for that work? Uh, Molly McCann and people like this. Definitely, you know, working with um, Owen Roddy and, and my boxing coach Ray Ginley, and getting over and spar Molly. I still not um, do what I know I can do on the feet. I need to just relax a bit and let loose. I think it's it's. Well, we only have only had four professional fights, so I'm going to get there one day. Things are just starting to click a wee bit better, and hopefully, I'll be able to show it next fight. Um, I don't know if you want me to reveal this, but I think I will tell uh, the the eye right ahead of this fight. You had a big black eye, and this was the week you were announced as the main event. The day, like this is why I get the nickname the curse. <laughs> the day I got the call about the main event, I went sparring that night, and I threw somebody so hard I like cracked my orbital bone. It's still there's still a big lump there, and I said to Katie, and like my eye, I couldn't open my eye for days. <laughs> I couldn't spar so since I did that. And I was like, what am I going to do? But yeah, it was so bad. <laughs> was it ever a serious, like, it was actually in jeopardy, the, the fight? Well, I would have went in with my eye hanging out, so not really. <laughs> yeah, it seemed actually that there was a, a lot of kids, actually a few young girls here as well, to actually watch you fight tonight. Does what you're doing actually register with you in terms of the wider impact of uh, a, a woman uh, as the main event here tonight? To be honest, not really, but maybe in a couple of weeks when I look mm. back and say, you know, I, I just always in, and focus on training and, and getting in and fighting and, and being the best version of myself, but it's so nice to see some of the younger girls and Isabella and Owen has, has his mm. two girls here as well, so it's nice to see them, yeah. You talked a lot about your faith in the lead up to this and you kind of told me that, it, you, you know, it, you use it to calm you down and um, you know, I'm sure it was very stressful this week. Did, did you find that was maybe more important for you ever this week but with all the expectation and hype? Definitely, you know, um, more so than ever, I really rely on, on my faith and, and my trust in God to get, get me through situations. There's, I think there's going to be a video released of my weight cut this week, which is going to be, it was a tough, tough 36 hours. My body just stopped uh, losing water. I was doing like 20 minutes in a bath, 40 minutes in a wrap and losing 0.3. It was just horrendous. I actually, whenever I came down, to, we, had, we were cutting weight for like 36 hours, we came down to weigh in. It says I was 0.2 under my scales and we got on the scales downstairs and it was... 0.8 over after everybody checking the scales and then I had hair extensions in and I went cut my hair so he ran into the ran into the bathroom everybody started cutting my hair out uh, there was like 18 minutes to go they're like Elia 18 minutes everybody was round cutting my hair extensions out then I was like right well we'll keep cutting my hair extensions out or we'll get in the treadmill so Aaron Chalmers ran up and grabbed, grabbed the sweatshirt and he was like right put that on so I was running on the treadmill for like six minutes or like Three minutes left, Leah. So I ran back into the toilet. Everybody kept cutting my hair. I ran in, like, and my bra was like just made it, like within five minutes to go the, the way in time. It was crazy. <laughs> that explains a big reaction, right? Like, I mean, you were overjoyed by that. Like, I mean, to, like we, we thought because it was 18 minutes, so, and normally the way ins are 9 to 11. It was 9 to 10. So everybody, after the most traumatic week, was like, <laughs> and then I was like, God hasn't brought me this far to leave me now. We're going to do it. We're going to do it on the treadmill, like. Trying to run. <laughs> so bad, so dramatic. It's like typical my, my life and me. What's next, Lonelya? Obviously, this is a main event, a huge thing. What's the next step for you? Yeah, we have a date for my next fight. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a tough fight, and I don't know if I can talk about it or not. Have you an opponent? <laughs> yeah.
Okay. Go on, tell us. Already? I, I, I don't know if I can. I'm not getting in trouble. Ah, uh, you've got to give me permission. When I, I'll tell you all first when I know, okay? When is it? In the next couple months. Oh, in um, London. <laughs> Tonight, you and Judith both made uh, European MMA history. So, what other what other challenges or accomplishments would you like to achieve in the future? I was an amateur world champion, and it's still my goal to be a professional world champion. That's my my aim. I just want to keep active and keep uh, improving with every fight. I have so much to show and so much to that, that I feel I can um, improve on. So, just keep getting better and keep winning. So Chris Cyborg is the world champion now at your and you've you know history with her going over to uh, to her uh, show and things. How far do you think you're away from Chris Cyborg? She retires soon. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I'm, I'm she's I'm only three and one. Like when that day comes, if it comes, I will be ready, prepared for that fight. That's all I'm saying. Leah, yeah, what do you do tonight? Now, obviously, you spoke about you know the trials, tribulations. It's been sort of a stressful week, stressful couple of weeks. What's the sort of the wind down period tonight? Um, what do you mean? What do, like, I do? He, he, what do you do to chill out now tonight? Are you going to hang out with, with Isabel? Go out and. I never go out ever, um, but my it's the first time my whole family, my sisters, and, and a lot of people have flown over from different countries to be here. So I'm going to. I don't even know where everybody is. I actually don't even know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I don't know where they all are. They're all left me. <laughs> So a lot of promotion for yourself in the build to this, uh, your faces all over Dublin. What's that being like and having people recognise you and say, oh, I'm really excited to go and see you fight? Um, I keep saying that, but I'm quite laser focused. I don't really take any of that in. Um, as I said, the next couple of days, I'll probably look back and, and be like, what just happened? But whenever I got the call, whenever I'm coming up to the fight, just focus on training, focus on the task at hand. I've got 20 million things to do today, and that's just how I live. <laughs> Like I know you say you're very laser focused. Being main event again is something that you probably consider in a couple of weeks. You just that adrenaline rush of walking out there and realizing this is it. Must be something you're eager to replicate straight away. Um yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally surreal. We were backstage and it's a year today that I made my Bellator debut on the prelims and then a year later I'm main event in it. You know, it's, it's pretty surreal and it's as I say I'll probably look back and think what the hell earth just happened, but um I feel really calm tonight, I'm really at peace walking out, and it's a bit more comfortable every time I do it. That goes well for the future then, as the profile gets bigger and the opportunities get bigger. Right? That, that goes well for the future, that relaxation that yeah, you've always definitely. had. Every, every, since I fought amateur, I mean, it was like Leah, all they ever said to me when I go out is relax, relax, breathe, just do you, and, and you'll be fine, so yeah.